Hello you guys and welcome back to another video and today we have Mr. Nightmares 3 Disturbing Pool Party Stories and it's about 14 minutes 14 minutes I like I think 14 minutes long so sit back relax and get your popcorn your Pringles your your pretzels, your fruits and vegetables and all that deliciousness and let's get into it. I'm a PB and J. I'm 28 years old now, but I vividly remember a horrifying incident that occurred when I was a 22 year old college student. I lived in Florida in a fairly large house in Orlando with a rather large property with a big pool outside. I was living with my parents at the time, and they both owned their respective businesses and frequently traveled for meetings and conventions and whatnot. One week in mid-May, when both of my parents were away, I asked their permission, and they allowed me to invite a limited amount of friends over to have a pool party in the backyard. I was excited and quite surprised that my parents trusted that I would be responsible enough to have a small party, promising no alcohol, no loud music, and to send everyone home at a reasonable hour as to not disturb the neighbors. I proceeded to call six of my best friends and let them know about the pool party, inviting them over the following evening with a limit of one guest per person. Everyone replied almost instantly, totally down to come over, asking if they should bring over snacks and drinks. Remembering what my parents said, I ignored their conditions and allowed my friends to bring alcohol. The following night at around 8 p.m., Almost all of my friends who I invited showed up with their bathing suits and plenty of alcohol. My friends took turns playing music on my Bluetooth speaker. They all brought their girlfriends or guy friends that were all acquaintances of mine, totaling 13 people including me. I started the backyard fire pit and we started drinking, laughing, making idle chit chat and some of my friends decided to go into the pool. Most of my friends jumped in off the diving board, and I sat by the fire watching them splash, pick their girlfriends up, slam them in the pool, and have a good time in their now drunken state. Almost two hours passed, and I remember what my parents said. I saw a I don't understand like, how people it was now approximately 10.30 p.m. Like that. Like, Most of my like friends were still in the water listening to music, and occasionally were coming out for snacks and more booze. Myself in a rather drunken state, I kind of lost track of time. I went inside of my house for a few moments to grab another beer when I heard leaves rustling from the bushes on the side of my property. Now keep in mind, my house is gated and has security cameras all around, so I didn't get too suspicious and I didn't think much of the sounds, figuring some of my friends may have made their way to the front of the house to either make out with their girlfriends or get ready to go home. At that point, it was already 11.30 p.m. and I completely failed to adhere to all my parents' rules which actually made me feel a little guilty. I went back outside with snacks and drinks and told everyone that it was almost time to end our evening. Ten out of the twelve of my guests were still in the pool screaming and horsing around while the two others went missing. When I realized this, I went back inside, walked around the house, and heard laughing and moaning from upstairs in one of the guest bedrooms. Oh. Assuming that one of my friends snuck upstairs with his girlfriend to hook up and whatnot, I don't need to give an explanation. I was too drunk and lazy at the time to go upstairs and tell him baby, I want to get freaky with you. I heard blood-curdling screams come from the pool. I ran outside to find my pool filled with blood on the surface, with my friends screaming that one of their girlfriends was swimming, and felt an arm tug them down. I must have had a knife cut them on their leg. Damn. All of a sudden, an unfamiliar face, a guy probably in his late 20s, with long scraggly hair, a scruffy uh. beard, tall with a couple tattoos on his body, emerged from the pool and ran out in a pair of fatigue cargo shorts and bolted to the front of the house. A few of the guys tried to chase after him, but they couldn't find where he went. We got to description, all my buddy. and took my friend's girlfriend and went inside the house, with a couple from upstairs hustling downstairs to see what the commotion was. Oh. I locked the doors while calling 911 requesting an ambulance. When the police and paramedics came to my house, they took the injured girl into the ambulance and the rest of my friends left the house, confused and shaken up by the events that just took place. The police and I went to review the security footage, and lo and behold, when I heard that rustling in my bushes, 
there was the guy, who somehow made it over my gate undetected, went to the side of the house and casually blended in, and went into the pool with the rest of the guests. Stupid me didn't think of checking the surveillance system. Too drunk and concerned about my friends having a good time, that I irresponsibly let an intruder enter my parents' property undetected. Oh, it was a, a like your own piece, property. Day, I felt like we're never you know, like to the whole like intruder. a whole gated community. And of course, when my parents returned, they found out what transpired, scolded me, and never allowed me to have a party in the house again. Mm. Well, I can't blame you because I need better. I was once invited to a pool party when I was 17. One of the more popular kids in our school was throwing a high school graduation pool party where his parents wouldn't be home. The kid's name was Daryl, and he had a huge backyard with a nice in-ground pool perfect for pool parties, though most of us have big yards where we live because we're in a less congested town. I wasn't close with Daryl, so I hitched a ride with a couple friends who knew him better. When the three of us stepped into his backyard, it was packed. It was actually impressive how many kids were there. I'd say at least a quarter of the entire grade was at this party. We wanted to say hi to Daryl because it would be the right thing to do coming into his party. We asked a couple kids we knew if they'd seen him. They said they hadn't seen him for a while now. So we asked others and got similar responses. We soon realized nobody seemed to know where Daryl was. Maybe he was in his house with a girl or something. So we just went about our own business. We played beer pong, people splashed around the pool, and the night became a daze overall. I didn't jump in the pool because I didn't bring a bathing suit and I just didn't want to get wet. Throughout the night, I would hear other kids screaming, where's Daryl? It seemed others were trying to find him because it was weird he hadn't been seen for nearly two hours. Uh-oh. Me and the two friends I came with joined a little circle of people talking about how Daryl hadn't been answering his text for a couple hours. Still, people were just chalking it up to maybe him being upstairs with a girl. Who knew, it was his party after all. Anyway, some more time passed and I had to go to the bathroom. There were a bunch of people inside the house, and there was actually a line for the bathroom. I opened a door in the hallway, and it led to the basement. My house had a bathroom in the basement, so I figured there was a chance this one did as well. I turned on the light in the basement and walked out. I started looking for a bathroom. There were only two doors down there, though. The first one led to a closet. There was another door on the other side of the basement. It was shut, so I went over to it and tried the doorknob. It was locked. I knocked on the door. There was no answer. The thing about this lock, though, it seemed that I would be able to pick it unlocked simply using my fingernail. So I did just that. I knocked again before opening the door. I was expecting to see a bathroom, but instead I saw a big pitch black room. It seemed to be a boiler room. However, there was the faintest, little yellow light emanating from what appeared to be some kind of boiler machine in the far corner of the room. And in that light, I could see a person, surely a person, standing right in the back of the room. My heart dropped when I saw the person duck down behind something. Oh. I thought, what if that was Daryl? I looked for the light switch and found it. It was one of those hanging switches that you pull down. Mm. I turned the lights on and went over to where I saw the person hide. The room was cluttered with tables and a washer and dryer machine, so the walking space was kind of arranged in a circle. When I got to where I saw the person not even 20 seconds earlier, I saw Daryl laying on the floor in a bloody mess, apparently passed out. I looked back up to the door to the boiler room when I heard the footsteps coming from that direction. There was someone rushing out the doorway, but for a split second they looked back and I instantly recognized the face of a kid named Todd from our grave. Wow. He was a very quiet kid that creeped out a large amount of people in our grade. Instead of calling the cops and tending to Daryl, I ran upstairs hoping to catch up to Todd to make sure there were other witnesses to his presence there that night. I made it upstairs to the hallway and started to scream for people's attention. Everyone who was in the living room came to look and could see Todd rushing out the front door. They saw him. They were now witnesses to his being there. I told them all to come downstairs and see what he did. I would have considered rushing to tackle him, but I didn't know what weapons he had on him. When we all got downstairs, we saw multiple stab wounds in Daryl's legs. 
First thing we did was call 911 for police and an ambulance. Daryl was rushed to the hospital, while at least 10 people vouched for me when I saw a kid in our grid named Todd at the scene of the crime. That's crazy. That same night, police apparently raided Todd's house and he was arrested. Mm. I'm pretty sure, sure he's still in jail. Stupid Todd. I'm sure they got him for attempted murder or what. Daryl is fine now, but everyone believes that Todd did what he did out of jealousy of Daryl's popularity. Todd didn't seem to have any friends in school and would often be picked on by kids in Daryl's friend group. I'm not saying Todd was justified at all, but it's scary what bullying can drive some people to do. Wow. Mm. When I bought my first house, I had a pool party on a Friday. It was supposed to be my housewarming party. I had a few of my closest friends over. Everyone drank a bunch, and a few hours later, people were on their way out. A couple friends were a little too drunk for me to allow them to drive home, so I offered them spots on the couches to sleep. I'll call those two friends Rob and Dan for the brief mentions they'll get in the story. By the time I went upstairs to brush my teeth and get ready for bed, I thought both Rob and Dan had already passed out on the couches downstairs. When I got into my room to change into my pajamas, I heard a splash in the pool in my backyard. I actually muttered to myself, what the hell are they doing? I went to the window to look out to the pool, and in the pool was one of them just standing in there. I was pissed because I knew there were no more towels outside, and now they'd have to bring their drunk asses in dripping all over my carpets downstairs. I opened the window and called out to whichever of them it was to get the hell out of the pool. Then, they turned their head to look up at my window. I had to squint my eyes because I couldn't tell if it was Rob or Dan. Whichever it was, was wearing a black shirt in the pool. I couldn't remember who was wearing what from earlier, to be honest. But whoever it was, they just had a staring contest with me. Like, for over 10 seconds, whoever it was just looked up at my window at me. I had grown impatient with them, so I went downstairs with my shoes on. But I froze at the bottom step when I saw both Rob and Dan fast asleep on either couches in my living room. My next course of action was running to the kitchen to grab the biggest kitchen knife from my knife holder and running outside. I turned the backyard light on before I went out so I could see. The pool was now empty. I walked to the edge of the deck to the pool and stopped. I looked into the pool making sure no one was hiding at the bottom. Then, I looked out to the further depths of my backyard, by the trees and bushes. In one of my trees, I was 90% sure I saw someone sitting on one of the thicker, lower branches. Even with the knife in my hand, I was still way too scared to go out there and confront the situation. I went back in my house, locked the door, and shut the blind on the door. I sat in the living room on the ottoman, feeling slight comfort being next to both Rob and Dan, even though they were asleep. I sat there just thinking and shaking when I heard this. Whoa. A tapping at the sliding door to the backyard. I woke up Rob and Dan now, asking the two to check the yard with me. They came you to the door to really have one week outside, you don't come around and when they didn't see anything, they said ignore it and go back to sleep. It was the worst reaction I could have expected from them. Someone I didn't know was out there playing some kind of fucked up game with me, and it was honestly terrifying me. I stayed up that whole night, checking my window every few minutes just to make sure no one was in my pool. I didn't actually go to sleep until the sun started coming up. By the time I woke up, my friends were already gone. I texted each of my friends who came over to confirm they weren't out there messing with me or whatever. I then went to the backyard to do some detective work. I didn't find much, but I did find a mini stepping ladder planted right in front of the tree that I was so sure I saw someone sitting in last night. I grabbed the ladder and went to go put it back in the shed. However, I stopped when I saw someone looking out the small window of the shed. Oh, It was someone I didn't know. I dropped the ladder and ran to my house to call the cops. I stood by my kitchen window watching the shed the whole time I was on the phone with the police. And at one point the door to the shed opened, and some tall, creepish looking dude with messy medium length black hair in a black t-shirt and cargo pants stepped out and walked to the gate. Wow, but... 
I gave the exact description on the phone, as well as to the cop who came to my door. Mm. I told the cop the whole story, but in the end, there wasn't much he could do other than write down the description of the guy. He suggested I install some security cameras and went on his way. Yeah. And a week later, I already had a camera system installed. And the detection monitors work too. That too. So that way, whoever comes to your front door, you know, whoever comes to the front door, you'll know that they're there. So yeah. So you guys, I think, okay, first and foremost, when it comes to houses and when I get my own place, I would definitely be getting security cameras, the detection, all that gadget stuff that the new technology has when it comes to keeping your home safe. The first one, um, the first one wasn't all that um, scary, it was just some creepy ass. Dusty, musty guy lurking. That's why you need surveillance cameras are great, and um, I guess you can say um, Bob wires. Bob, excuse me. Bob wires are great, definitely, or something that can um, prevent somebody from from stepping in your property, even if it's gated. The second one was horrifying I don't know what was going on with Todd and I know he been been bullied but sweetie sweetie that is not the answer for you to just um, go to a party and stab someone multiple times in the leg in the sea if I'm doing it right that is not the way to go go talk to somebody if you're being weird, I don't care if you're weird, but don't, but do you, but don't do some evil stuff out of, um, out of, um, jealousy. That's not right. And the third one, like, again, I think out of all of them, the second one is more horrifying. The third one, that's why you need protection. Gun, license to carry. And technology when it comes to protecting your home. That's what I said. Yeah. So tell me guys what you think and give it a big thumbs up. Share, like, subscribe, all the awesome stuff. Until next time. Peace. Have a blessed one.